How's it going, everybody? Well, the mystery is that the mystery of the kingdom, where Jesus spoke of the mystery. He said, Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? He said, because it is meant for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom for them. It is not meant to know or to understand. <laughs> What is the mystery? Well, the mystery is plain and simple. The God of the Old Testament that you read was just God playing the role in a cameo appearance as himself, seemingly reacting two things that Abraham did or the Israelites did or that Moses did or that Adam did like God's playing whack-a-mole things pop up then he has to react the mystery is he ordained every bit of that before the earth was even formed that's told to you in John 1 1 through 3 in the beginning was the word so every story in the word was already in the beginning in the beginning was the word. The word was with God because he's ordained all things. Isaiah 46, 10, the most important verse, declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, Genesis, to the things that have not yet been done, Revelation. My counsel shall stand, I will do my pleasure. That God's created the end from the beginning. Revelation's already written. There's nothing in between that God is waiting on to see if something will happen. And it's not that he just knows the future. That reduces him just to a psychic. No, he's ordained it. That's the mystery. Goats are born goats. Sheep are born lost. They get the call. Jesus said, I only came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Non-Hebrews that are sheep were considered or referred to as grafted in Jews. Israel is the church and the church is Israel. It's not land. It was land in a sense of the Old Testament. But just in one sense. And it will be land again during the thousand year millennial reign. But that's the mystery. God came and has played a cameo appearance, appearing in his own movie that he's produced, written, directed, scripted, and even starred in cameo appearances as Jesus coming in the flesh or God the Father, putting the rod to the Israelite people. Not all of the Israelite people died as sheep. That's the mystery. Nobody knows it. Except sheep. So that's pretty cool. Because by grace, we've just been given the truth. We don't earn it from hard work or because we have some good heart. We're no more a good person than anybody when we're born or as we live. But the Lord calls his and he makes us a good person in his law. Not in the world's law. The world won't see us as good. They'll be like, he doesn't celebrate Christmas. Who does he think he is? No, they won't like it. They're not supposed to like us. It's not a like contest. <clears throat> anyway. Are we ready to go? I didn't have the Bible study. Usually I can't prep the Bible study. 
and talk to you at the same time because yeah i can't walk and chew gum like that so friday was the fourth column we did the fourth column okay i think we're good here Romans 10, I'm sorry, Romans 12, 10 through then chapter 13, verse 1. Be kindly affectioned to one another, that's sheep to sheep, with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. I know they say that there. We know what they're saying, but I like to see how it's said. Love each other with genuine affection, each other sheep sheep, and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Not slothful in business, servant in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope. What is our hope? Our hope is that we're sheep. It's basically you hope you have salvation. It's not hope in Jesus. You know there's a Jesus. That's why you're a sheep, or that's why you're claiming him. You're not hoping there's a Jesus. You know there's a Jesus, but you hope you're part of his church. So you rejoice in how the Lord is beating the world out of you which is also known as tribulation. Because as the Lord is beating the world out of you, that's what gives you hope that you're actually his because you see him working in you. Semicolon, patient in tribulation. So you're told right there what you're just told previous. You're happy, basically put these two together, you're happy the Lord is beating the world out of you. And then lastly, continuing instant in prayer. Distributing to the necessity of saints giving to hospitality. Bless them which persecute you. There's your tribulation. When they hate you for not celebrating Christmas or birthdays, it doesn't mean they're necessarily emotionally hating you. But they'll hate on you one way or another. Bless and curse not. Well, let's look up what this actual bless is. Let's see how they word it over here. It just says bless. I want to see. This is Romans twelve fourteen. G twenty one twenty seven. Speak well of to pray, celebrate with praises, to invoke blessings, to consecrate a thing with a solemn prayer, to ask God blessing on a thing. Pray God to bless to one's use, pronounce blessing on of God to cause to prosper, to make happy to bestow blessing. Interesting, isn't it? Bless, well, there it is. I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. People that hate you today, let's go back and look at Saul. When Saul was present at Stephen's stoning as one of the bad guys, he later became Paul after Jesus called him. Somebody persecuting a sheep today might be, uh, of course, seen as a goat today, but they might be just a lost sheep persecuting a sheep. Like in the case of Saul, because he said, when I was cut from my mother's womb and called by his grace, he was already under grace. When he was born, 
because God had chose him from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before having love, having predestinated Saul, who later became Paul, unto the adoption of Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. For grace, Saul, Paul, was saved through faith, through the proper call, when Jesus called him to Damascus, through the proper walk, as the Lord then beat the world out of him, put a thorn in his side, put him in chains. It was not of himself, lest Paul ever boast of a free will decision. For Paul, Saul was God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto the good works, which God hath before ordained that Saul, Paul would walk in them. For he had chosen Saul, Paul in him from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, having predestinated Saul, Paul, unto the adoption of Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. See, I put Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, and then Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10, 10 being the key verse, instead of putting the church in there, which is, of course, it's predestinated before anything was. The church was already appointed who they would all be. They're born lost. They get the call. That's the baptism by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Distributing to the necessity of the saints, given to hospitality, bless them that persecute you, bless and curse not. We never know. It could just be a lost sheep. Jesus didn't bust up any of the people that were arresting him. He even said to the Jewish people in general, uh, they know not what they do when he was on the cross. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. My not high things, but condense to men of low estate, be not wise in your own conceits. Well, it's the second time he said that, be not wise in your own conceits. He said it again. So he says it at 12, 16 and eleven twenty-five. 25. Well, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> hitting, hitting wrong buttons all over the place. Um Would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye be wise in your own conceits. It's just interesting that he uses that phrase. Be not wise in your own conceits. Recompense to no man evil for evil. So somebody does something to you, don't do it back. Provide things honest in the sight of all men, if possible, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. So again, vengeance is the Lord's. We know that, right? But rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Everything's of the Lord's will. It's not of our will. Just let the Lord do what the Lord's going to do. <laughs> Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Again, your enemies are not flesh and blood. It's the spirit world. Um, that's Ephesians 6.12. Anything that's good in you comes from the Holy Spirit. It's not because you're a good person. God makes you a good person in his world, not in the world at large. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. They will. <laughs> For there is no power but of God who's declared even all the evil on the earth. Proverbs 16, 4, Isaiah 45, 7. 
There's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. All right, let's continue on in Revelation 16. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of mouths of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them together for the great uh, day of God Almighty. And that'll be what? That's judgment. That's after they're raised from the dead. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keep his garments lest he walk naked. And he gathered them together into place in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. Well, the battle of Armageddon or the great battle is nothing more than judgment. It's what they call Gog and Magog. People try to tell you that it's some kind of war with Russia or something. It's, it's just, I just laugh. It's judgment. It's when they surround, they're raised from the dead. Satan is loosed out of his chains. And he deceives them all to think they are going to surround Israel. Gather them, Gog and Magog, gather them together for to battle. The number of who is the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breedeth of the earth and encompassed the camp of the saints. So they are around. That's Israel again is the holy land. And Jesus has been with his sheep during their thousand year reign with Christ. So they surround the saints in the beloved city. So it, and fire comes down out of God from heaven and devours them. And that's that's the great war of Armageddon, the war of Gog and Magog. And that's judgment because all the goats are killed for a second time. And then they're referred to as dead when they're judged, and then their dead bodies, which are in the grave, hell means the grave, are thrown into the lake of fire. That's where the fire is. Hell is not eternal torment. Only the fallen angels get eternal torment. They have eternal life in either direction. Humans do not. Humans only get eternal life if they're sheep. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.